Pareto Principle and why you should know it. What's up guys, Jeff here from Grit City Fitness and Performance. You may have heard about the Pareto Principle or you may have heard it in its other reference which is the 80-20 rule. The Pareto Principle or the 80-20 rule is very, very simple. It basically just states that 80% of your results come from 20% of your actions and 20% of your results come from 80% of your actions. This is very, very important because one of the topics that if you look back through a lot of our videos, our series, our blog posts, our, our content, all that stuff, we talk about choices. And we, we talk about doing the right things at the right time. And we talk about doing the big movers, not the little pieces. But when you have the full reference point, you understand it a little bit more. So take, take a step back real quick and we can kind of look at it through the, the lens of a workout, right? If you train inside of our programs here at Great City Fitness and Performance, you might notice a couple things. We have four key movements, those key movements being a squat movement, a deadlift movement, a pulling movement, and a pressing movement. Now with those four movements, those four movements when done correctly at a high stimulus with a good challenge and properly, properly designed, does 80% of the outcome that you're looking for inside of your training because they're such big rocks, right? Well, if all I was focusing on was doing like lateral raises and band rows and, you know, uh, walking steps, those are 20% movements, or sorry, those are 80%, 80 of the 80% uh, of the other movements. They're just fluff and filler, but they're not giving any result. They're only gonna give 20%. Another way you guys can think about this is think about everything you're doing much like a cup. That cup only has so much room, right? The intent should be to put the big rocks in first and fill that cup up with the things that take the most space. Once you're there, then you can start kind of filling it in with the pebbles and the stones and the, the, the water or the sand, whatever else. But you must put the big rocks in first to seal the space, otherwise the, rocks will, the big rocks will not be able to fall down. So when it comes to nutrition, the 20% that people are focusing on is like, oh, am I eating keto? Am I following the paleo diet? You know, I'm not eating any sugar after nine. Well, that's great, but you're fucking up the 20% of things that you could be doing that actually get you 80% of your results, such as this, tracking your food, accurately, accurately recording your food, setting and preparing yourself up with a meal plan in advance, so preparation. Um, knowing exit plans or game plans and strategies for how you're going to avoid issues. That would be 20% of the actions that you guys probably might not be doing, but that would elicit 80% of your nutritional success. But are you focusing on the wrong things? The same thing could be said for weight loss, right? When, when clients don't work with us or before they work with us, typically they'll go into the gym and they'll do five sets of 10 of a bunch of shit on machines and then go do like 25 minutes of cardio. And that's again the 80% of stuff that you're doing, but it only gives you 20% of the results. Yet all we have to do is rotate what they do and they could elicit a great response and result just by reducing that and cutting down a volume of other stuff because they're not doing all the things like the sand and the little pebbles. When you focus on the big rocks, you get the big results. When you focus on the little shit, you get the little shit. So the question for you today is where in your life, not just with your fitness, not just with your nutrition, but where in your life are you focusing on minutia, minors, when you should be focusing on the major things, right? A lot of, a lot of business coaches that I follow, they don't major in the minors. Because when you major in the minors, you're always playing the small game. The focus should be always looking to get yourself into the majors. So where are you currently focusing on the minors? And where can you shift yourself to start focusing on the majors? It's very, very easy. And if you have a hard time kind of realizing where you're at in this point, write down what you do. Write down what you do and see what those things that you're doing are. And by doing that, you're going to have a reflection or a realization. You're going to see a lot of things that you might have otherwise been thinking were one way, but are actually a completely different way. And this is the truth whenever you write things down. This is why as soon as we implement a, a journaling or logging strategy with our nutrition clients, they see instant results. And it's not just because of anything else. It's simply because they're paying attention to what they're eating and they're tracking, right? It's just like with your finances. You might think that you understand your budget until you look back and realize you don't have money. And the only way you realize that you can understand your budget correctly 
is by writing it down in the checkbook or looking at your bank statements and seeing, oh shit, I went to 7-Eleven 13 times in the last 10 days. No wonder I'm down $130, right? So realizations help you figure out kind of where you're pointed and then redirect you to your true north. True north being your goal, right? So now again, taking one more step back, where are you currently majoring in the minors? Where are you currently performing 20%, uh, sorry, where are you currently performing stuff that's 80% of what you're doing, but only gives you 20% of your results? And third, where can you start shifting your small rocks to become big rocks? And where can you stop spending so much time focusing on minor shit and start shifting yourself to focus on big major shit? Now here's the one last thing I'm gonna leave you with, guys. What's easy to do is easy not to do. And with that being said, we tend to know that what we're referring to here in regards to the 20, or the 80-20 rule, again, 80% of the things you do only give you 20% of your results. 20% of the things you do only or will give you 80% of your results. The truth here, guys, is the things that you're doing, those 80% 80, 80 of the time that give you 20% of the results, you're doing them because they're actually easier than the big stuff. That's the truth right? Because it's much easier to worry about focusing on not eating sugar after nine than it is to simply food log. Why? Because food log takes action. Thinking that I'm doing successful because I didn't eat sugar after nine is easy, okay? So what's easy to do is easy not to do, but the thing that you need to be doing is the stuff that elicits the result. And that stuff is the stuff that you're probably shying away from, saying you don't need to do, or saying I'm too busy doing all this other stuff. But it'd be like cleaning your house. Your house is fucking dirty. The floor is disgusting. And you say, I have to clean my house. But you spend the time outside raking up imaginary leaves, right? You're doing the wrong work at the wrong time. Now, if my whole house was clean and I needed to go outside, that's fine. But I still have a dirty house that needs to be clean. But I stood outside and raked the grass because it was easier. So where in your life are you avoiding the hard stuff doing 80% activities that are only eliciting you 20% of results, and where can you shift that to start performing 20% of your things that actually give you massive results? Nutrition, fitness, mindset, finances, work, your family life, your kids, where can you do these things, right? Because let's just look at one last thing, guys. If we look at our children, right? I don't have children yet, so I'm actually thinking about how I'm going to do this, right? But one of the things you can look at is like, you could spend three hours with your child. Okay, so parents, you know, stay with me here. You could spend three hours with your child, but if your child is on their phone the whole time and you're on their phone the whole time, you might've been with them for three hours, but you got no fucking activity with them. You didn't engage with them, right? You didn't have any pleasure, fun, enjoyment, engagement. But if you put your phone down for 20 minutes and they put their phone down for 20 minutes and you guys played and had fun and played a video game or did a puzzle, that 20 minutes would have a longer lasting, bigger bubble effect than the three hours you sat in the room together. So take that as, as a piece of information that you can use in all aspects of your life. Where are you giving 80%? It's only giving you 20. And where can you shift that to do less actual work that might be a little harder it's got 20% of stuff that actually gives you 80% of your results.